Good morning and happy Saturday. Be right back. Sorry, just logging into my other screen, so uh, I'll probably end up cutting a little bit here in a bit. But um, yeah, happy Saturday. Hope everybody is doing well and staying happy and healthy. And just one more second. Just had a quiet person in the other room. Um, so we're making croque madams today. Uh, croque madams are so the, essentially a fancy ham and cheese sandwich. It's not just like your regular bread and ham and cheese and stuff. It's uh, a little bit more intense and you can either have a croque monsieur, which is a ham and cheese with a bechamel sauce on there and a little degree on top, or you can do the really fancy one and put a fried egg on top and then you get the croque madame. And so we're gonna go ahead and do the full thing. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start up on my sauce and uh, if the music's too bad, too in the background, let me know. I can get that turned down. Um, the shirt today that I'm wearing is one that I got as a freebie from the Blood Drive here in the area. Uh, and so it's just one of those things that as coronavirus has kicked in, the blood donations have dropped off. So uh, if you are able to, by all means, please go in, donate blood at some point. Uh, there are a lot of people in need for it, and donations, like I said, have dropped off drastically since coronavirus has come in. Uh, nobody asked me to wear this shirt. This is just a shirt that I had, and it's one that I'm, uh, I've am i given blood in the past. I have not given as much as I should have. I know friends who have given gallons. I also know friends who have never given. And so if you can, if you have the time, contact your local blood drive, and uh, they'll set up so you can get in there and help and be safe. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start this up. I'm going to start off with the bechamel sauce. And if you want to follow along, this is the uh, Food Network's recipe for croque madams. Drop a couple tablespoons of butter in there. With those couple tablespoons of butter, I'm going to add, I'm supposed to add a cup of whole milk. I'm going to add a half and half. Uh, half a cup of half and half and a half a cup of 2% milk. Kind of split the difference there. But um, whenever you're doing a sauce like this, don't put the heat on too much because you're, you can end up really causing problems with the butter. You can thicken it up too much and turn it into a big lump of glue instead of turning it into something fancy that you want to have. Uh, and the key to a bechamel sauce, I, I know that I've made cream sauces here in the past. Uh, the bechamel sauce, the big thing there is adding uh, bay leaf to it while it cooks. Uh, real simple thing, just remember to take the bay leaf out when you get done with it. Nobody wants any of that. So I'm going to let this butter melt down a little bit. But I hope everybody's having a good day. I hope everybody's staying healthy. I'm gonna be, yeah, let me run real quick over here. Just wanna make sure I get my screen up on the other computer to make sure that I am uh, responding to any comments anybody makes as they do this. Uh, so right now I'm still melting the butter. I'm gonna add a little bit of flour here in a second and let that cook up. And once I'm happy with that, I'm going to add the uh, mixture of the milk and the half and half. Uh, you can use whole milk. I, in this case, because I had half and half, I have a half and half and 2%. If you add just half and half or a heavy cream or something like that, it gets really thick really quick. And so it's a lot more trouble sometimes than it is worth. 
And I know that you've seen this before. I've got this canister. That's a tablespoon right there. And it's about another tablespoon right there. Uh, I've got this canister that I use my flour in. What I do to get this out, because otherwise it's a real pain in the butt, I've got a spoon that we used to have that I didn't really like this spoon for one reason or another. And so I went ahead and I just bent the top of it and I can just lift stuff right on out. Stupid little trick, but it works. So I now have two tablespoons, and really for a lot of these cream sauces, it's a one-to-one -one butter for flour. I've got two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of flour. I'm going to let that heat up a little bit on medium heat. I'm going to keep stirring this so it doesn't burn or anything. But I want to let it get a little bit more cooked than what you might normally do. Let it start bubbling. There we go. There we go. It's starting to bubble. And now I'm going to go ahead and whisk in. There we go. And so now this is going to be really, really thin right now. And this is where I'm going to go ahead and add bay leaf. I'm going to add two bay leaves, actually, because I like the flavor. And I just have to continue to stir that every so often. Just to check it and make sure it's not boiling. Check and make sure that it's not getting too thick or sticking to the side. With that out of the way, I can start on my next project. Let me go get a bowl for this. So, I don't have as much Gruyere as I want. Uh, the recipe itself calls for 12 ounces of Gruyere. I only have six, but that's going to be just fine because uh, we're not making a full four sandwiches. I'm only making three sandwiches. But as a result of that, I just have, still have to go just a little bit light on my Gruyere. So, I'm going to have to shred through this whole block. This is one of those things I was thinking about doing ahead of time, but since I just have to sit here and keep a high, um, by the way, I should put the timer on. Make sure that doesn't sit too long. Let's go there and see how that's gone. That's looking pretty good. And so that's going to sit and just keep on simmering here in a second. And so the whole idea is to get that sauce, uh, the bechamel sauce, get it a little bit thicker. Once it gets thicker, I'll take some uh, Parmesan cheese and just a sprinkle cheese is just fine. I'm going to add those together and then just pour it into another bowl so it cools down a little bit. And as soon as I finish grating this Gruyere, I am then going to start putting together the ham sandwiches. So by the time the ham sandwiches get done and the, and the bechamel sauce gets done, then I'm going to start toasting some sandwiches. Once I get the sandwiches toasted, then I'm going to end up throwing them into the oven under the broiler. And while they're under the broiler, I'm going to make fry up some eggs. So it's going to be a very nice little meal here. And it's one of those things that like I said, it's a little bit it's a little bit more difficult than just basic ham and cheese. But it is very definitely worth the extra work as we do this. And now if you've got a food processor or something like that, you can very easily get through your air. I'm going to get this uh, graded down a lot faster. Or you can do it ahead of time. Just drop it into a Ziploc bag or into a bowl of saran wrap. But really, honestly, it's not that hard at work. And see a couple of bubbles forming up. Let's get that going. Let's do that a little bit more. A little bit of steam coming off of it, so it's going to start cooking, and that flour is going to start congealing. So I hope everybody's having a good day today. I need to go and as soon as I get this cheese grated, I'm going to go make sure I didn't get my. Uh, 
Facebook up on the other screen yet, so uh, if somebody's saying anything to me, I cannot uh, see your responses because those comments go zipping by so quickly in the user interface. And uh, in case somebody's wondering what you're hearing in the background, uh, given that this is a croque madame, uh, but using the bechamel sauce, and it's just essentially it's a French dish, I have Edith Piaf singing in the background. Let's see here. Let us see. And I saw that. Oh, I had to turn that back down. I saw that uh, Casey popped in. Hello, Casey. How are you doing? She thought the. Oh, uh, there we go. Nicely starting to thicken up. I've got a few more minutes. This will sit here. But this is the point where it starts to get really important. You want to make sure anytime you're doing something like this, once it starts bubbling, once it starts thickening up, you've got to make sure you're whisking it so it doesn't stick to the bottom. I'm going to drop the heat back down a couple clicks. Because I want to make sure that this doesn't stick. I want to make sure it doesn't burn. All right, I've got a good stir on there. I'm going to grab my, uh, I need a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese. And then for the Parmesan cheese, you can use you can use like the bag of parm. You can use uh, cups and things like this. And good morning, Melody. Uh, I thought that was your face I saw on there. But uh, for Parmesan cheese, if you buy the bags with the like the full-on grated Parmesan cheese, uh, you know you're getting real Parmesan cheese. The problem with something like this is you're going to end up, that's how new this container is, you know you're going to end up with a little bit of uh, what they call uh, monocellulose fiber, also known as wood pulp. And so, that's starting to thicken up, and nice, that's starting to get really, really good. Let me grab a couple of chopsticks here real quick. Chopsticks, if you get used to using them, they're one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. Because you can do stuff like this, fishing out the bay leaves. Alright, where's the other one? And I had two. There we go. Alright, so there's the bay leaves that were down inside there. So I've got those pulled out. Nice little hint of bay in the bechamel sauce. I'm going to turn that heat off, and I'm going to dump in this quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. And if there's a little bit extra, that's absolutely no problem. Can't have too much cheese. Unless, of course, you're lactose intolerant, so that's uh, always a sad thing to have to deal with. So, I've got a Bechamel sauce thickening up right there. I'm going to take it, I'm going to pour it out of here into this separate bowl so it gets to cool down on its own. Because that also, as it cools down a little bit, it'll help it thicken up so it's a little bit easier to work with and you don't have to worry about it dumping all over the place because the more this heats up, and it's like it, the more it cooks it, it'll thicken up. The more it cools, it thickens up. But uh, as it, you, you don't want to get it too hot, and this way it will just kind of sit. It'll hang out. The flavors will strengthen inside itself. All right, so bechamel sauce is going to sit there. And now that I've got that bechamel sauce pulled aside, I am going to take the uh, that's set to cool. I've got four slices of bread. Well, I've got, I've got the bread that I'm going to set up now. I'm only making three sandwiches instead of four sandwiches. 
So I'm gonna turn that timer off. So I'm gonna set set up these sandwiches. And I'm just using a pizza pan. This is just some sourdough bread that we already have. I already grabbed the ham. There's the ham. So it's asking for two to three slices of ham when you say we go crazy and add four. All right. And it's always nice if you're working with thin ham, to just fold it over when you're doing these a little bit, just kind of like what you get at a restaurant, how it kind of thickens up the sandwich, gives it a little bit more body. But be interested in finding out what anybody else is eating today. And if there's anything that you ever want me to try to make on here, I am game for most things. If you know me, you know I'll eat most anything. And Let's get that one on there. Yeah, okay, that's three slices of ham on each one of these. That's pretty good. There we go. All right. So, I've got that stuff set. That's ready to go. I've got the ham. I'm going to mix together half the Gruyere and the bechamel sauce. And so, I'm going to... Take this, I'm going to dump that in. Okay, so that's about half the Gruyere. I am going to take this spoon that I have. There we go. There we go. And so I've got Gruyere and bechamel sauce. Now I'm going to spread that on top of the ham. A little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. And I'm going to spread that without being too much because I'm going to have some more of this that I can put on top of the sandwiches in a bit. All right. So let's get that spread. Let's get that spread. And so what I'm doing right here, it's almost like a liquid cheese sauce that ends up going on the ham. And it's already thickening up a little bit while it's sitting on here. So I'm gonna take those. I've got spoon back in there. I've got a little bit of that sauce left that I'm gonna end up using here in a bit. And now I'm gonna put the other slice of bread that I had on top, before you see, before I cover up this last one, I'll let you see what that ends up looking like. So let's just put in a smear of stuff on there. There we go. Now that I've got that done, I am going to heat up this cast iron skillet I have over here. And so what's going to happen now, mm, that's some yummy stuff. I always love those little happy accidents as uh, stuff drops off on the counter. Hey, Sarah, I'm glad that you dropped in. So, uh, skill's heating up. I'm about ready to drop my sandwiches on to start toasting them on here. So what I'm going to do at this step is I'm going to be toasting in the skillet. Once they get done toasted on both sides, they go back on the pizza plate, the pizza pan that I had. Then they're going to go under the broiler uh, with more of that Gruyere sauce on top. While it's in there, I'm going to be cooking up the eggs over here. Uh, and then those fried eggs are going to get dropped right back on top of the croque madam. So. All right, so we're about there. I'm going to go ahead and, while that's warming up, I'm going to drop a little bit of this butter in there because it always helps make a nice golden coating on the bottom of the bread. There we go. And remember, if you're using cast iron, if you're using nonstick, make sure you do not use, as I'm using a metal tool right now, 
make sure you don't use metal spatulas, make sure you don't use metal tools because you're going to end up wrecking the, uh, the, all the stuff that you've got going on, whether it's the nonstick coating, whether it's the uh, finish that you've got going on your uh, stuff. Let's see who's posting what. Uh, let's see here. What did Melby, oh, okay, I see Melby threw down. <laughs> Soft Winnie the Pooh. Alright, so let's see, where's my cheap spatula? There's my cheap spatula. Let's get that going. Butter is up and going. I'm going to be doing these two at a time. I'm going to take that, shove it right up against the side. I'm going to take that, shove it right up against the side. And I'm going to let those sit for about two minutes a piece. And let those sit, toast up on that side, flip them over. Some, second verse, same as the first. By the time I get done with this, I'm going to be using a whole mess of butter. Uh, let's see here. Man, that, that little dab of bechamel sauce I dropped on the counter. That was some yummy stuff. It's a good thing I've got this whole pan. Mmm. That's some yummy stuff. Bechamel sauce, very easy to make. Very, it goes with so much stuff. Uh, I feel so sorry for anybody who is lactose intolerant because there's so many good things that you can do with all of this. Let's see. So, those two are still sitting. I'm going to go ahead and pull the eggs up. And, uh... If you don't have a cast iron skillet and you don't want to go out and spend all the money that you can for anything, you don't need to go and get a little at although those are very nice. Uh, you can go out and get the lodge stuff at, uh, heck, you can get them at some hardware stores. Um, but you can also go around and you can find them at thrift shops. You can find them at uh, garage sales for just dirt cheap, especially if, if they're rusted up. Just take them home, and you can, there are very easy ways to re redo, uh, completely redo cast iron skillets. A little bit of rust on one of these is not going to hurt. It's just, just going to go down that. All rust is is a protective coat, iron oxide. You clean that off, and then you can completely turn your skillet around. All right, let's uh, flip these over. There we go. And you see how I did that, just right over end for end. Mm. Two more minutes on that one. And I'm gonna go ahead and do something I rarely do. I'm gonna grab the camera. See if I can get this. That's what those are looking like. So, let's see if I can get the camera, phone back up there the way I should. I don't often get a chance to bring the camera down, but uh, it's nice when I can. So uh, I'm about ready to pull those off. Let me go ahead and throw the ham back in the fridge while I'm waiting. Bechamel sauce is still sitting here. I've got a pile of Gruyere cheese that's just going to go on and just melt away like the most amazing thing. All right, ham back in the fridge. Oh, and you can add a little bit of salt to your uh, sauce if you want. You don't have to. And, I mean, like, honestly, you don't need to just with the amount of flavor that's locked up right in there. Um, all right, where's my pizza plate? Where's my pizza plate? So, right now, it's just a waiting game. Uh, the big rush is going to be when I get these things into the broiler because I only want them in the broiler for a couple of minutes, if that, uh, because the broiler is going to be able to get those very quickly heated up. Let me go ahead. I'm going to the, if I was just doing them and not worrying about eggs, I would have them at the highest 
setting underneath the in the oven underneath the broiler. I've got them drop down one because I just don't want that much heat directly onto them. So I'm going to go ahead and grab these and drop that there. Take that. There we go. Drop that there. I'm going to drop a little bit more butter into the bottom of this. Drop that heat down a little bit because I think it looks like it wants to burn the butter. All right, let's get that there. There we are, and so that's going to continue to cook. Oh, two more minutes on that. So these things are toasty, toasty. There we go. I'm gonna get those with the, there we are. So, we are getting on our way to getting more stuff. Um, again, while I'm waiting for this, uh, the shirt that I'm wearing today is for uh, being a blood donor uh, occasionally. Uh, I don't donate as often as I should, but as I was reminded today, um, there's a number of us who are blood donors, and have been blood donors, uh, we need to get out there and be out there more often because a lot of us really do need to uh, give in to uh, donate the blood. Uh, ever since coronavirus kicked in, a lot of the mass blood drives, they dropped off precipitously. So a lot of blood banks are in dire need of blood. So we can continue to work with those and try to get, uh, try and get some more blood into the system for folks because there are still people who need this. There are still people who uh, have to have, um, there, there, there's people out there who have been able to give a lot more. There's people who have been, given, been able to give a lot less. Um, I've slacked off. I haven't given as much as I used to at different points. All right. Let's turn this. That one got a little bit dark on that side. That'll probably end up being mine. I'm going to drop this heat down a little bit. And then uh, I'll have to make sure I scrape any of the crumbles out of there for when I do the eggs. But I'm about ready to throw, do a real quick. That's about ready to come out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start setting this. So this is the point where you start doing some fun stuff. So I've got the sandwiches and I'm going to spread the bechamel on top of the remaining bechamel on top of the sandwiches. And then I'm going to see how it'll be enough for these two. And then I've got this one other one that's going to come off here in a second. And then once I get those, I'm going to get the remaining cheese. Let's get that across. And you want to coat pretty much, try and get this pushed around the whole surface of the bread because you don't want the bread to burn underneath the broiler. Because if you give the bread half a chance, it will burn. There we go. Mm. Mm. That's yum. Let's see here. Looks like that's still going. I'm going to go ahead and call this one good. I'm going to turn that off. All right. Let's see this guy get spread around. He's still toasty because I just pulled that one right off the skillet. There we are. Let's get the last little bits and pieces of this. Which one needs it the most? I think that one does. And again, if somebody ever has anything that they want to see me make on here, 
please let me know either here or I drop all of these on my uh, YouTube channel as well. There we go. All right. And this could even be more cheese. I mean, I, I made this with half the cheese that was in the recipe. It called for 12 ounces. I made this with six ounces for this recipe. And this is still just a ton of cheese. So I'm going to take the oven. I'm going to put on broil. Uh, yeah, let's... Broil. There we go. Set that for broil. And I'm going to put this in there for at least a couple of minutes. And then see how that goes. There we are. Timer on. I'm going to set, since it's still warm enough, I'll drop that for three. I am going to now turn this on. Since I want to cook these things pretty quick, I want them to cook pretty hard. I'm going to go ahead and put this on some higher heat. Let's make sure that all the crumbs and stuff, yeah, there's no crumbs or stuff in here. I'm going to drop a little bit of, a little bit of oil. Let's get that around. And I'm going to assist that a little bit. Let's get the piece to get to the. There we go. Get that heat going. We're going to throw three eggs on. And I know they'll. Whoa, that was. We're going to use that one. I'm going to go ahead and use that egg because that was cracked already. And these eggs are going to come in contact with each other, but then we can just cut them apart, breaking into their own thing. Like I said, I want them to kind of cook fast, I want them to cook hard, leave a good corpse. There we go. All right. down because it cooked on the one side, now they're cooking on the other side. Oh yeah, that's looking beautiful. All right. I am going to throw, where it is a good trivet, here is one. Actually, I'm going to drop the cooling rack down. Not that I really need the cooling rack, but... Get this stuff out of the way so y'all can see it when it comes up. Throw the cheese out of the way. Ah, I gotta love that. When the skillet is seasoned appropriately. There we go. Bingo. Turn off the timer. Oh, cheese is just about ready to start turning golden brown. We'll turn that off. 
And then uh, let me go ahead and put the camera again over here. So what do you know? That's twice in... I'm not sure why. So what I'm going to do here is just to show you, that's the sandwiches coming out of the oven. And I'm going to take the eggs. Egg. Egg. And egg. A little bit of extra. All right. And as with a lot of the things that I do like this, I'm going to take a little bit of extra. Let's see where I have. I've got a little bit of parsley. Some parsley flakes. There we are. Drop that a little bit on top. A little bit of flavor. Maybe even do a little bit of A salt bay. There we go. So um, we now have. Let's see how hot is that? Okay, good. That's, that's cool now. Oh no, it's not. So there's our sandwiches. We got sourdough, ham, bechamel sauce, sourdough, uh, the Gruyere cheese. Well, sorry, bechamel sauce with more Gruyere cheese on top, and then the egg after it's gone through the uh, broiler. So, uh, I think I am hungry, and I'm ready to do this, unless somebody's got some sort of questions or anything like that. I see a bunch of people have just come on late. Uh, so, anybody who just came on, you can go back through. You can catch the... Uh, work that I did on this. Uh, if you are wanting to make this stuff at home, this is the uh, Prof Madame recipe that is at Food Network. And so it's really a good recipe. Uh, it's a lot easier than you might think it is. I'll throw these eggs back in. It's not a tough recipe. It's just, again, with a lot of things, we start to get to this. It's juggling stuff, and most of the stuff, except for the grit or cheese, you're going to have in your own kitchen. You can do the bechamel sauce with, it's just flour, milk, uh, bay leaf. If you want to add a little bit of salt, do stuff like that, you can do that. Uh, with the uh, other stuff that you have going on, you can use, You can if you've got Wonder Bread, you can do this with Wonder Bread. If you've got ham slices left over from Easter or from uh, some other uh, family thing, you can use the that ham slice. You don't have to use the fancy shaved ham or whatever from the deli. You can use, uh, everybody's got eggs. If you don't have Gruyere, by all means, feel free, to, feel free to throw in Swiss. Some people might raise an eyebrow, but throw in some cheddar. I don't care. It's uh, just a lot of people are going to have stuff in their fridge, and you can make some really, really good stuff. I saw there was a question. Hold on. Oh. I am glad, Janelle, that you enjoy this. Um, these are, we haven't had these for a while, but these are very good. We enjoy having these. Uh, for a lot of the stuff, and again, a lot of the stuff that I've been cooking is part of this series. Can you believe it's been more than three months? Uh, I think this is episode 14. Uh, very rarely have I done stuff that you shouldn't have quick access to in your fridge, uh, whether substitutions or otherwise. Uh, if there's something that you've got sitting in your fridge and you're trying to figure out what the hell to do with it and how to use it, uh, let me know and I'll be more than happy to try and figure out what, what you can do. Uh, might be able to have it as a future episode. I would love to uh, get people's thoughts on stuff that they've been trying to do. Uh, what fun stuff have you been cooking during all of this? I know a lot of us are out and about now and very rarely is anybody who's watching that's going to be on lockdown. But it's, uh, we're all in a different place now than we used to be. Uh, it's still, it's one of those things that we rarely get a chance to get out. So I've been cooking as much as uh, we, we like to cook at home. We've been cooking a lot more. Uh, some of the stuff, that, a lot of the stuff that we actually like to cook here at home is not stuff that we cook regularly, not stuff that most people regularly cook. So we do a lot of Asian stuff with materials that you probably don't have in your cupboard. Most of what I cook, I try to cook with stuff that's in your cupboard. 
if uh, so, I'm just I'm still sitting there, just sometimes thinking, okay, what can I do with this? And yeah, granted, Gruyere is a little bit of an ad from um, just grab grab to the store, but everybody's store carries Gruyere. Most of the earlier so shows I was doing were essentially trying to get rid of stuff that you might have overstocked, like my ramen episode, uh, the pancakes, stuff like that. People still have way too much flour in their cabinets, probably. Uh, if there's something that you want to see, if there's something you want me to cook, if there is something that's a favorite of yours that you want to see my take on it, uh, give me a shout. I am more than happy to do it. Also, um, if you want to sponsor an episode, throw me a t-shirt and I will wear your t-shirt and talk about whatever subject you want me to talk about. Uh, just give me a shout. And we'll do that. Other than that, it is now 40 minutes that I've been doing this. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and call this a day, and I'm going to go eat my food, and everybody else is going to be able to eat their food. And uh, I hope you guys have a good weekend. I hope you all stay safe, stay away from each other, wear a mask. Please wear a mask. Don't be like those chuckle nuts in Tulsa today. It's wear a mask. Love everybody. Be nice. Don't be a jerk. So now with me down off my soapbox. Let's see what that last comment was. Pairings. Uh, with a pairing with this, a, um, I would actually go for it. You mentioned a semi-sweet white. That might work. I would actually go more for a dry white. Uh, something like a Chardonnay, I think, would go really well with this. Uh, because of how the flavors are going to be for the for the sauce and how rich this is all going to be, you don't want to go too far to the sweet side of whites on this. This is, uh, you're talking a heavy cream sauce with a uh, pretty rich cheese. So, I mean, it's just, there's there's some things that are going on there. What's this next one, Janet? Oh, yes, Janet, and thank you for the reminder to wash my hands. Um, very definitely. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave you with licking the spoon that has leftover bechamel sauce uh, mixed with the Gruyere. Uh, I'm hungry. I'm going to have my lunch. You guys take care. You guys be safe. And uh, like I said, have a good weekend. Bye-bye.